Not only do these photos from Lunar Orbiter provide immense detail of what the terrain looks like, they can also be used to compare images taken after the Apollo missions. Another recent unmanned mission that the propagandists hype about is the Clementine Project, a joint space mission that involved NASA and the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization of the US Defense Department. In other words, made in the USA. In April 2001, Clementine returned a picture of the Apollo 15 site. The photo was quickly rushed to press. Put aside those absurd claims the Apollo moon landings were a hoax. Two scientists poring over photos taken by a lunar orbiting spacecraft have eyed evidence of a touchdown. Here is that photograph in question. Dark spots B and C are supposed to be recent impact craters. We are to believe that Dark Spot A was created by the Lunar Module's engine plume as it spread out across the regolith during descent. What we are going to do is compare the Clementine image to an image taken by Lunar Orbiter 5 of the same area. The squiggly line you see is hardly real. We'll zoom in and rotate the image so that the two are lined up on top of each other. Watch now as we switch the images. At face value, the dark spot in the Clementine image appears absent in the Lunar Orbiter 5 image. But look closer. Notice how there is a tiny impact crater located in the vicinity of where Apollo 15 is said to have landed. We also obtained an image taken during the Apollo 15 mission itself. As you know, on the J-Type missions, a metric camera was mounted onto the service module to take mapping photographs of the lunar surface. According to the Lunar and Planetary Institute, Lunar Module Falcon touched down at 104 hours and 42 minutes into the flight. A quick look at the Apollo 15 transcript reveals that the metric photography began at 128 hours and 22 minutes into the flight. This means that Alfred Warden began taking these pictures about one day after the LEM landed on the moon. In other words, any metric photography of the Apollo 15 landing site must show the aftermath of the touchdown. Here is one such photo. The image number for this picture is AS15M1135. Let's compare it to the image from Lunar Orbiter 5. The image is virtually identical, and the impact crater we saw before is clearly visible. Now watch as we compare this Apollo 15 metric image to the Clementine photo. Again, the impact crater is located in the vicinity of where the LEM is said to have landed. So if the Apollo 15 caused this splotch, why is there clearly a tiny impact crater in its place in the pictures taken before the mission, and even during the mission. 
A simple comparison of these photos reveals this splotch for what it actually is. An impact crater that was already there long before Apollo 15 was said to have landed. Returning to Cellini, the Japanese also released images showing a mysterious white halo at the Apollo 15 site. This halo was supposedly caused by the lunar module's descent engine. To prove that this was indeed caused by Apollo 15, the Japanese released their photos alongside two from the actual mission, showing the landing site before and after. The circled area is supposed to be where the vehicle landed, as you can see, this mysterious white halo is certainly absent in the image taken before touchdown. But watch what happens when we compare it to the images we just looked at. Here is the Apollo 15 metric image we saw earlier. And here's the Clementine picture again. Here's the image from Jax's site again. Take note on where they say the landing site is as we shrink it down so that the terrain matches up. Now watch as we compare the images. As you can see, the halo is located to the northwest of Splotch A. If both the splotch and the halo were caused by Apollo 15's descent engine, they should be lining up on top of each other perfectly. And yet, they are quite clearly two completely different areas. I guess the Japanese didn't look at these pictures very well, nor did the propagandists who echo their findings. It has often been asked, why not simply use a telescope to try and see the vehicles left behind on the moon? Bill Casing brought this up when he was interviewed on the Fox special. I would like to invite NASA and, and all of their supporters to simply take the most powerful telescope on Earth and see if there's a lunar lander there. If there's a lunar lander there, I'll never say another word about an Apollo hoax. If there's no lunar lander there, I'll rest my case. But no telescope exists that can examine the moon in such detail. That depends on who you're asking. My name is Joss Hawthorne, and I work at the Anglo-Australian Observatory as the head of instrument science. I'm basically an astronomer who also builds, builds things. Indeed, I worked for NASA for about seven years in the US, um, but even to this day, I still work with them in, uh, in other roles. But I used to work with them um, professionally, almost okay. full-time. You need what's called um, adaptive optics. And that's a great idea, you know. I think I'll do that as an experiment. When, as soon as we get this adaptive optics imager working on Gemini, I'm going to ask if we can actually point it at the moon uh, and see if we can find the module for you. How about that for an experiment? <laughs> Wouldn't that be wild? Yes. Adaptive optics are special instruments to help telescopes overcome the distorting effects of the Earth's atmosphere. These optics are currently installed on such telescopes at the Gemini Observatory. This interview with Hawthorne was filmed in 2006. It is now 2009. I'm still waiting for the Gemini Observatory to find the LEMS descent stage. The latest probe that the propagandists have chosen to hype about is NASA's upcoming Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, due for a launch in May 2009 after previously being delayed for a launch in late 2008 it is said that this probe will actually see the artifacts left by Apollo astronauts. Gee, where have we heard this before? Because this is a NASA probe, it could be argued that this is not independent verification. But nonetheless, what do you suppose the odds are that the propagandists will suddenly start singing a different tune when the probe launches? Stay tuned.